Hello. Today we'll be talking about what a null hypothesis is and why we use it in statistics. So before I define null hypothesis, I'd actually like to define what's called a research hypothesis. So often when we think of a hypothesis, we're really thinking of this, a research hypothesis, the one that the researcher expects. This is the hypothesis that's rooted in logical reasoning. It's rooted in the previous findings of research. Um, so this differs from a null hypothesis, um, which is a type of statistical hypothesis. Um, the two types of statistical hypotheses include null and alternative hypotheses, um, which we'll now get into. So the null hypothesis is the hypothesis that assumes no difference or no change or no treatment effect between two groups. Um, two sample means are either similar, very similar, or, um, or they're equal. So this is the hypothesis that assumes homogeneity. These are all different ways of saying the same thing. Um, now, the alternative hypothesis differs in that it assumes that there is a difference or a treatment effect um, or it assumes heterogeneity. So these are the two hypotheses we consider as statisticians when we are faced with a research question. So it may not be exactly what we expect in our research design. However, this is how we should think of hypotheses from a statistical perspective. So I wanted to provide an example to uh, kind of apply these concepts. Um, a researcher is interested in observing the effects of implementing a mandatory physical education period at the beginning of the school day on test scores in the following class period over the course of the school year. Um, and this is relative to a neighboring school district which has a similar curricula, um, curriculum, sorry, and uh, has similar testing, et cetera. So um, the first question is, what is the research hypothesis? Um, well, the researcher expects to see a difference. They expect to see that test scores will be higher following um, the mandatory physical education period. This is based on research, which finds that um, exercise improves cognitive function, memory, learning, et cetera. Um, next, what is the null hypothesis in this situation? Well, with this research question, um, the null hypothesis assumes no difference. It assumes no treatment effect. It assumes that um, ultimately um, test scores will be similar between school districts. So this might not be what the reason, in this case, it's not what the researcher is expecting. But from a statistical perspective, this is the, this is the hypothesis that we will be dealing with. And so why do, we, why do we deal with this hypothesis? Why do we use a null hypothesis? Well, null hypothesis testing is rooted in philosophical thinking, which states that knowledge is best advanced by aiming to reject homogeneity. So this line of thought is slightly confusing, I understand, but um, it's ultimately rooted in our attempt to reject homogeneity or that no differences exist. Um, we attempt to do this by conducting statistical tests. Um, and these statistical tests compute p-values. And these p-values would ultimately allow us to decide whether or not we reject homogeneity. Um, and so this is how we determine whether or not differences actually exist. Um, and this is really the basis of statistics or inferential statistics. And so some takeaways, what have we, what have we learned? So lesson one, um, statistical hypotheses include the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Um, the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis may or may not be the research hypothesis. Um, so that's important to consider, especially in the realm of research. Um, lesson three, um, the null hypothesis assumes homogeneity or no treatment effect, no differences um, between two groups, two samples. And lastly, um, in null hypothesis testing, we use statistical tests to determine whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. And I have a reference. Thank you for your time. And that's it for me.